All right, so this little video is designed to help you uh, get through the post lab calculations. So what we'll do first is we'll do the first calculation uh, to figure out our vapor pressure initially, and then we'll show how it modifies the different temperatures. We won't go through the whole thing, but we'll at least get a part of it, and we'll get to the graph and show you how to do that. All right, so <clears throat> the the things you should have had, some of the things you should have had in terms of measurements, uh, our atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is what I read from our barometer. Um, once we added a liquid, and I'm not going to tell you what liquid it is, but um, once we added a liquid to the pipette, we should have a mass. Then once I added the bubble, we should have another mass. Okay, so this will tell you then how much liquid was displaced. The mass here then that was displaced um, would be um, the difference between these. So that's going to be 2.856 minus 2.686 equals 0 0.170 grams. Okay, now that gives you the mass of the displaced liquid. It doesn't tell you the size though. Okay, and so to get that then um, I'll give the density, uh, I'll give you the densities for your liquids. Okay, so whichever liquid you pick, so this one has 0.785 grams per mil density. So to get the volume then, you divide that number here by the density. Divided by 0.785 grams per mil. And so when you do that, you should get 0.216 mils. Okay, now we injected 200, okay? So we know that it's bigger, okay? And that bigger difference then is due to the vapor pressure of the liquid, okay? So if this number is not bigger, then that's gonna be a little bit of a problem, okay? So um, you probably have an error someplace. So we'll make sure we get that. That's why we wanted to make sure this was right before the lab, uh, before you left lab. Okay, so if this is the volume of the bubble, and we know we injected 200 microliters or 0.2 mils, okay, then we should be able to calculate the vapor pressure, okay? So the partial pressure then, so if we know, we know the partial pressure, okay, of each one should add up to the barometric pressure. Since we put this in under barometric pressure and it's equal then, so P bar has to equal the partial pressure of air plus the partial vapor pressure of the, of the liquid. So I'm just gonna call that Vp. Okay, <clears throat> and so, okay, so, and we also then, so we, but we can know from the volumes what, we know we put in 200 microliters of air, okay, so we know then that the partial pressure of air is going to equal whatever ratio, okay, so P bar, okay, times and then the ratio here of the bubble that we know we put in, which is 0.2, divided by the bubble that we have, 0.216, okay? So if you do that mass, multiply that times P bar, which is up here, you'll get that equal to 689.7 torr, okay? And so then, if we want to know what the vapor pressure is then, the vapor pressure um, is just the difference between this and atmospheric pressure, right? So we can just say that then 744.9 minus 689.7, and that equals 55.2 millimeters of mercury, okay? So, so that gets us our first uh, volume. Okay. All right. So now that gets us to what happens at 23 degrees. So now we have all these other, so we have 23 degrees and we have our partial pressure or whatever of, um, 55.2. Now we need to do it for each other temperature. Now we don't have to do this. After, we don't have to do this one for the first temperature. After that, it gets a little bit easier. Okay. So, um, so the other numbers you should have are temperatures and then the meniscus 
reading at each one. And okay, now the meniscus doesn't know, or the gradated pipettes don't start at zero. So you, this first number is not going to necessarily match whatever your uh, volume here is. So you have to do sort of difference to figure it out. So we know that at 23 degrees when the meniscus was at 0.182. Now I went to um, 0.2. I went to the third decimal point. I don't know. Probably you're only going to hundredths. Uh, maybe you could go to half a hundredths. I don't know. But we. So this is what I have, and you can do whatever. Okay, so we know that volume is 0.216. <clears throat> okay, and we also know then that the partial pressure then, Vp at that is 55.2. All right, so now let's figure out what we have here. So the meniscus at 40.6 is 0.220. Okay, so this one then is going to be the volume that we had originally. Okay, plus the difference that we have here. Okay. So 0.182 plus that, so that's 0.438. Um, 0 0.038, sorry. So that total then is going to be um, 0.254. Okay, now the vapor pressure we is almost identical to this calculation we did up here, but there's one thing we have to take into consideration, okay? And that is that the air, okay, is going to expand as well, okay? According to the idea of gas law, this 0 0.200 um, milliliters of air is going to be bigger at a higher temperature, okay? So we have to figure out what that volume of air is going to be, okay? So the volume of air at 40.6 is going to be governed by the gas law, right? So if we have PV equals NRT, okay, and we're looking at the relationship between V and T, okay, we know then that um, V1 divided by T1 is going to equal V2 divided by T2. Okay, so it's just a simple ratio. Okay, so, <coughs> um, so if we're solving then for V2, which is essentially what we're doing here, Okay, which will be V2 is going to equal V1, okay, which is our 0 0.2 milliliter bubble, okay, times temperature 2, which will be the second temperature, which will be 40.6, but we've got to add, this This has got to be Kelvin, right, so we can't do it in, in Celsius, that's a... a mistake people make all the time. So that's 313.7 divided then by the temperature, the first temperature, 23.6. So that's 296.75. Okay, so then our volume of air, just due to expansion, is 0.211 milliliters. Okay, so now we can use this number 0.221211 milliliters, and we can use that in here. Okay, so we can basically calculate then the vapor pressure. It's going to equal 744.9 minus, and then we've got P bar 744.9. times whatever this number is. So it's going to be 0 0.211 divided by 0 0.254. Okay, so that accounts for the expansion of the air, but then we still have this extra. Okay, so if you do that, then the volume that I got was um, the vapor pressure I got was 124.8 okay millimeters mercury okay so you're gonna have to do that for all of them and just apply the exact same thing you can still use this point two as your original one the whole time okay um, that's fine okay so 
but that, you know, so do this for each temperature. So, you know, if you do it in a spreadsheet, it, it takes no time whatsoever once you set it up right. The key is getting it set up right. All right. So you're going to do that. You're going to have a temperature and vapor pressure then for all of your five uh, meniscus points. Okay, and so at the end then, what you should be able to do is then graph. Okay, make sure your temperature is in Kelvin. So you should be able to graph your class, your Clapeyron equation. Um, okay, so you got to plot one over t. Okay, on the on the y axis, on the x axis, and then natural log. So that's log base e of the vapor pressure. Okay, so if you do that, you'll see you get a nice straight line with a really good um, slope. Okay, so um, or a good r squared value. Okay, so now how do we use this data? Okay, well this equation, remember, is the is based on the Clapeyron equation, which is the natural log of P equals minus delta H vaporization divided by R times 1 over T. Okay, so again, T has to be in Kelvin. If you do this in Celsius, you'll screw it up. Okay, so if you do that calculation then, the slope, which is this number, should equal minus delta H vap over R. So if you multiply that times R, you will get HVAP, right? Now the other thing we need to do is get the boiling point. Okay, if you're going to get a predicted boiling point, okay, then <coughs> that's going to be equal where the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, okay? So in that case then, <coughs> solve Solve for x when natural log of p when y equals the natural log of p bar. Okay, now remember x is one over t, so then you're going to have to convert it over. Okay, we should be able to figure that out um, relatively straightforward. Lee, and then compare that to your. Uh, you can look up the boiling point. It's not that hard uh, for your liquid, and compare it and see how here you are. So. Other than that, uh, you know, it's this calculation, again, this is an equation we don't use very much or won't use at all in general chemistry, but it can still generate useful data. And so, you know, so I wanted to walk you through it and show you how to get there. Um, the more important thing is realizing what vapor pressure and enthalpy of vaporization mean in terms of uh, conversion from liquids to, <clears throat> from one phase to another.